Hello, everybody, and welcome here to the LEGO house. My name is Peter. I'm a play agent here at the LEGO house, and I'm standing right now in the history collection here in Billund, Denmark. Uh, we have an awesome live session for you today. Uh, we are actually having our first live sessions here today. And uh, we have a big production team that is trying to get this to work as good as we can. And uh, I think it's going to be great. Um, first of all, in our production team, we have Maiken. And Maiken is going to uh, be in charge of our chat along with uh, Jan Bayer, who's here as well. And then we have uh, Astrid helping us as producer here today. So uh, we are going to have a great live session here today. We actually have more than 2,800 people that have signed up for this live session today. And you are very welcome to all of you post some comments or questions inside our uh, chat function in, in here. We will try to pick out some of the questions here in the end, but we will uh, make sure that the questions is usually is about the, uh, the live session we are going to do here today. Yes. So uh, without further ado, I need to introduce our tour guide for today. Uh, we uh, have uh, our very own Lego corporate historian Christian here with us today, and he's going to take you on a, a history tour uh, down here in approximately 25 minutes. OK, so we're going to start this live session now. So come on in here, Christian, and then we'll start the tour. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. Yes, and um, hello, everybody. Um, as Peter mentioned, my name is Christian. I am a corporate historian here. Um, so I've been really looking forward to to, uh, to spending some time down here in the history collection here in the Lego house to uh, to to tell you about how this uh, this this company uh, began. So uh, so uh, so let's uh, let's get stuck in. Uh, so. I'm going to talk quite a lot about this guy we have right here, young, handsome man. So uh, this is uh, this is our founder, Ole Kirk Christiansen. Uh, so um, a little bit about his background. So Ole, he's born uh, 20 kilometers northwest of uh, of Bilan, so he is from from the area. He is uh, from a, um, a very large uh, family. He has uh, 12 brothers and sisters. Um, so it was um, the, 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 the household didn't have much, you know, um, but um, so, so, so fairly quickly, um, Ole at a young age, uh, age six or seven, he actually started to, to work and, and, and help pitch in, in, the, in the household. So he was looking after maybe some sheep on a, on a neighboring farm or, or something like that. So, uh, so that is something he did for, for, to, to help uh, for, 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 for many years. Um, later on, um, Ole, he, uh, he starts uh, an apprenticeship as a carpenter. And he actually does so uh, by one of his uh, older brothers, who is a, a master carpenter in a, in a neighboring town. So uh, he has an apprenticeship uh, uh, with him. And uh, this photo I'm standing next, next to right here is, uh, is actually... Um, is actually from when he finished his apprenticeship. So it's from 1911. Uh, so after this young guy here finished his apprenticeship uh, as a carpenter, he, um, he performed his military service in Copenhagen for a while. Um, and then he, um, he, he traveled. He traveled abroad. He traveled to uh, Norway. He traveled to Germany uh, as it was sort of custom back then, because then he he traveled and, 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 and offered his his new knowledge and services and his new craftsmanship to 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 learn and to show and, and, and learn more about what he he had learned during his apprenticeship. Um, and he did this for for for, for quite a few years. Um, but in 1916, Ole here is ready to settle down. Uh, so he comes home to uh, this part of, uh, of Denmark where he's from, and then he moves to Bilun and he buys the local woodworking factory. So, um, and the same year, 
he actually marries uh, his wife, um, Kirstine. So we can actually go over here and take a look at a, another photo because then we can see a, a few members of uh, of Ola and his uh, his family. So. Um, and I know that the lighting is not the best all the way through here, uh, this exhibition, but bear with us and it will get better as we move uh, uh, along. But we actually have, uh, we have Ole here um, and we have three of his uh, five uh, children. Um, and uh, we have his, uh, his wife over here. This is uh, Christina who he marries in, in uh, 1916. And, um, and so, uh, so Ole is 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 fairly quickly sort of um, gets a, a reputation around here. You know, uh, uh, people know if they hire Ole and his uh, his services, they will get you know a job well done. You know, uh, high quality work. But they also know he's not the cheapest. You know, it will cost you something. Does that sort of sound familiar? high quality, high price. So I guess that has been the case all along. Um, so, uh, so, so Ole is, sets up this business again, as mentioned, he, uh, he makes doors and windows, he repairs uh, farming equipment, um, body works for carts, he builds a lot of houses for the local farmers. Um, Barns for the local farmers as well. They are his best customers. Lots of farmers in the area here. Um, he also uh, um, has the main enterprise on a few dairies, a dairy here in, in Bilun, and also um, 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 uh, the main enterprise on a, a church not that long from, uh, from here. Um, and that, that building, building that church was actually not a very good business for him. He actually lost a little bit of money on uh, on that due to different uh, circumstances. But um, Ole, who was, uh, he was uh, sort of, you know, he, 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 he took it uh, well and he said, well, you know, it, it was for a good cause. Um, so, uh, so he had a, he had a sense of, uh, of humor about him as well. Um, so, um, so Ole, he's uh, again, really known for this nice uh, building style. He goes and, uh, with uh, something called better building practice, which is uh, a, a way of building that really has a lot of emphasis on, on, on high quality material, using high quality materials. Um, and also the, 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 there's a nice symmetry in the buildings you, uh, you, you, you make. And that's something that really, um, I think, appeals to a lot of people and especially also uh, Ole him, himself. He, uh, he built a house for himself and his family in the 20s in in that style uh, which still is here in the, in the, in in the, in in, in Bilun. And um, just to, to top it all off and make sure that everybody knew this is really high quality work, he actually uh, laid out the very first pavement in Bilun outside his house just to sort of show this is really high quality uh, craftsmanship. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's something, right? Um, so, uh, so again, we have Ole here uh, with some of his children and, um, and, and his wife um, and, and things are going uh, great. But of course, as always, something happens. So, so um, moving a little bit up in time, we, we have a, a, a big crisis on our hands because something happens in New York in the late 20s. We have a crash on Wall Street and the Great Depression, this huge global economic crisis that affects large parts of, of the world. It really also starts to affect Denmark in the early 30s and a, a, a sector such as our agricultural sector is really, really hit hard by this crisis. Um, so, so, so that also means that Ola and his business is struggling all of a sudden because he relies heavily on these farmers. There's a lot of um, um, uh, unemployment and, uh, and, and so on. Times are rough and Ola has to lay off almost all of his, uh, his, uh, his employees in, in that period of time. Um, so um, um, just to top it all off, in 1932, at the peak height of, of, of these, uh, this economic crisis, Ole uh, loses his wife, Christine. She dies uh, of complications of, uh, I think it's pronounced plebitis. 
Um, apologies if that's not the, the right pronunciation of that. Um, so suddenly Ole is alone uh, with at that point in time four boys age 6 to 15 and, and then he has this really, really struggling business. Really, really tough times for, for Ole here. So he has to try and see if he can save what's left of his company. So let's move on a little bit uh, because uh, then I have a, another photo I want to show you guys. Uh, so up here, So I want to show you this uh, beautiful photo right here because uh, this is uh, what all starts to uh, to to uh, to produce more of uh, because of this uh, economic crisis. So we have uh, smaller items here: step ladders. We have stools, um, chairs. We have ironing boards, and very important for us, of course, we have a lot of wooden toys. So all of this is because because of this economic crisis, people cannot afford to buy and, and sell anything. There is no money between their hands. So instead, it's barter. You trade stuff. And these items are easier to trade with than, let's face it, a barn or a house. So, for example, if we take a look down here, you know, on this beautiful wooden fire truck that we have right here. So so it's much easier for Ola to produce uh, something like this and say, here you go. Maybe your children want to play with this. Do you have some vegetables in return? You know, because then I can put food on the table to, to tonight, which is quite nice. So 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 this is one of the reasons why he he switch um, and, and, and starts to go in a in a new direction and, and he leaves his his uh, his trade a little bit as a as a, as a master ca uh, craftsman as a master carpenter. Um, in all his mind, this is temporary. He has a plan that he wants to go back being a, a, a master carpenter when, when the crisis is over. You know, he has a nice reputation for himself. People know uh, that he is a, a, a really skilled uh, craftsman. Um, but he slowly starts to see something here. He starts to see, especially with the wooden toys he's making. And an important thing to add here about Ole is that Ole, he does not care if he's making a wooden fire truck or if he's making a roof construction for a house. He will only use the best possible wood he can find and he will always make sure to put it uh, together so that it's nice and sturdy. Uh, always high quality work. Um, so what Ole starts to see here is that I'm pretty good at making these wooden toys and, and they seem to appeal to, to a lot of children around here. And also very importantly, he decides or he sees that when times are rough, as is the case here, parents, they will always try to make sure that their children do not feel the same hardship they are feeling. So when times are rough, parents will always shield off their children a little bit and perhaps acquire new toys once in a while so that the children can play and use their imagination and forget about the reality a little bit. That is really uh, something that is uh, is quite uh, interesting here. So he uh, he sees this and uh, eventually decides this is my future. I am, am not going back to being a master carpenter. I am now a toy manufacturer. So when he makes that decision, he realizes if I'm now going to be a toy manufacturer 100%, I cannot have a company that is called Beelon Woodworking Factory. That's not a great name for a toy producing company. I need a new catchy name. So he wants a new name and he thinks long and hard about it and he's blank. He cannot think of anything. <laughs> Yikes. So what to do? Uh, eventually only he sets up a competition. He asks family, friends and the, the few employees he has at the time, try and come up with a good name. And as the prize for the one coming up with the best name, he wants to give a bottle of his home brewed cherry wine. Nice. So that's 